This is a case presentation on medial meniscal repair using an accessory mid-body portal and an all-inside device technique. First, portal establishment in the knee is critical for successful meniscal repair. Labeled here is the inferior lateral portal, which will be used initially as the viewing portal. This is created at the intersection of a line tangential to the lateral aspect of the patella and the inferior pole of the patella. Next is the inferior medial portal, which in this case will primarily be the working portal. This is variable depending on the meniscal pathology. In this case, with a suspected medial meniscal tear, this portal will be made just superior to the anterior horn of the medial meniscus. It is important these portals are established in near full extension as to avoid involvement of the prepatellar fat pad or Hoffa's fat pad. The accessory medial portal, labeled AMP, is created just superior to the mid-aspect of the meniscus in an outside-in fashion. A surgical probe, as shown here, will be used through this accessory portal to facilitate meniscal repair. Here is a complex medial meniscal tear with radial and vertical components. A needle is introduced through the AMP just above the meniscal tissue, followed by an 11 blade scalpel with the blade directed away from chondral surfaces followed by the surgical probe to further characterize and evaluate the pathology. The probe will remain in the AMP portal for the duration of fixation. Next it is important to create a bleeding response and a bleeding bed for meniscal repair as to uh, increase the chance of successful healing. This is done with a mechanical shaver as well as needle trephination as shown here followed by a rasp for abrasion of the capsular surface as well as the meniscal uh, repair surface. Once the uh, meniscal bed is adequately prepared and bleeding is ensured, uh, the repair can begin. Next, an all-inside device is introduced through the working portal. The surgical probe is then used to guide the all-inside device to the appropriate position on the meniscus. It is important to enter the meniscal tissue in a perpendicular fashion. The probe can direct both the device as well as the surrounding tissues to ensure proper placement. This is useful both for undersurface vertical mattress tears as well as superior vertical mattress tears. The probe also is used once the second anchor is placed inside the sliding loop to prevent meniscal cut through or abrasion of the tissues. With the probe inside the loop, the meniscus remains reduced while the suture is tightened against the probe. Additionally, the surgical probe can be used as an elbow to direct and prevent skiving of the device across meniscal tissues. Once the initial anchor is placed, the probe is helpful to not only reduce the meniscal tissue, but direct the device around the condylar surface to get a capsular bite with the second anchor. The device is directed perpendicular to the meniscal tissue here on the undersurface so as to sequentially reduce the meniscus to its native bed. Here the probe is used more for reduction of the meniscal tissue as the device enters into the meniscus. This technique with the accessory medial portal and surgical probe allows for predictable and correct entrance into the meniscal tissue and capsular tissue for vertical mattress suture placement. It also reduces iatrogenic condylar injury with more control of the device. Here is the stabilized meniscal tissue following both superior and undersurface mattress sutures.